presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hey, good morning. Here. Good afternoon, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. So that's not my intro music, but uh, we are recording the Trader's Ed show here today between 2 and uh, 3. So uh, thanks sir, for joining me. If you are, if you were listening in um, uh, on a, a taped version of that, uh, sorry that I wasn't able to do the uh, show this morning. But we are back with you live. We've got uh, all the U.S. indices that we track trading to the upside. Dow's up 225, S&P 54, NASDAQ 100, 287, uh, Russell's up 26, the uh, semis are up 93, Tranny's up 143, gold is up uh, $17, silver's up 50 cents. That's a 2% move there. Lights recruit up 87 pennies. So we've got lots to look at. Now, I would love to hear from you to do the normal opening. Just simply the music just kind of threw me off. But I would love to hear from you. If you're listening live, you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If uh, you're listening in live and you don't and you can't really call in, but you have a question, go ahead and send me an email. For that, you send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get it. this show started on a terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Again, all those U.S. indices trading to the upside. So let's do this here. Where do we want to start? I think we'll start here with regard to market breadth, TAS market breadth. So let's look at the uh, short-term time frame, the shortest that I have, which is a 30-minute time frame. And we can see right now that when we take a look at the uh, NASDAQ 100, it has switched to short-term bearish. Now, what I mean by that, when we go look at a 30-minute chart, this will be helpful to us, is we've got uh, more instruments on a 30-minute basis inside the ND NDX 100 trading below profile versus above profile. So sellers have the advantage here. It's 35 below, 23 above. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. Again, we're looking for different time frames. These are the 30-minute time frames. If we take a look at the S&P 500, it's updating right now, 103 above, 187 below. So both on a 30-minute basis. We have negative market breadth. In fact, let's just start there. What I will do is I'll just go to the 30-minute charts for each of the equity future contracts. So I'm going to pull that up. Then we're going to change screens here. So we'll just kind of do this methodically just to try to get a feel for what the markets are communicating to us. So I just have to pull those up. Okay, so now we'll go change screens. Let me give me a moment here. Get on the white background screens. I see they're populating. So you're going to see some white blank screens. There we go. So we're looking for is uh, any kind of topping signal. When we've got negative market breadth, that would especially also where is price trading relationship to support. So turns out, how about that? Each of the four equity future contracts, as we came on the air at 2 o'clock, form TD9 count tops. That's a beautiful thing. It was all on the uh, bar following bar number nine. So if we take a look at the ES mini here. Now, even though it formed a TD9 count top, it is still neutral at worst. Why is it neutral at worst? Well, one, price is trading above that green oscillator and change line, so it still has a rising price oscillator above zero. It says if you're short, be careful. And it says if you're short, watch how price reacts as it hits that line. If price bounces off that line, that could be telling you that was the extent of the move lower. Now, if price closes below that line, and that line right now is measured at 44.86. I can't promise you that's the number that it's going to be at as price gets down there, but that's your ballpark range. And if price did close below that on a 30-minute basis, then that would be telling us about a move back to its next level of support. And that next level would be down at 44.67. If price were to close below that, then the next area of support would be its breakout level. Remember, the TD9 counts help us to identify tops and bottoms. It also provides us with breakout and breakdown uh, levels of support or resistance. In this case here, it would be support. And that would be at 44, 35, 75. That's a number on a 30-minute basis that price must close below to suggest at least for that time frame, the 30 minute, that there would be a change in trend cycle. Now, since we have 30 minute profiles in tops on each of these, we should go through those. So the NQ also forming a new profile. 
And that new profile has supported 15259 and 15325. And 15325 is a level where price should target. That's that oscillator and change line. Any move below 15259 should find support at 15060. Again, that's a TD9 count breakout level. If you're not familiar with the term, terminology, you're listening in, you normally listen to Larry's show, you don't hear my show. I have workshops that'll teach you. This is a tool and a pattern that you want to understand. You know, trading these markets is all about being able to identify, and it's nice when you can do it objectively. I identifying support and resistance. So the TAS profiles, if you don't use that system, I encourage you to take a look at it, especially for an intraday trader. You want to know where buyers and sellers are lined up and also take a look at that TD9 count pattern. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, no new profile it did form a TD9 count top. Its level of support where price should trade back to is in the 34,771 level. If price were to get to below that area, then we'd be looking at a move back to 34,539, its breakout area. And on the Russell 2000, TD9 count, there's a roads mint indicator signal that's present. If we had a doji candle as we came into two o'clock, very easy to generate a bearish reversal candle. You just basically have to close lower. If it does, though, it would also confirm a Rhodesman to indicator top. Do two tops make it more important than one? It does not. If it's four tops, though, well, then it's better music. But if we take a look at the two tops that could be forming here in the Russell 2000, they should find support at their oscillator and change line, and that's at 1893. If price gets below that, then we'd be looking at moves to 1873, 1871, 1868, and then finally 1862. All four of those would be levels of support on a move lower. That is not the signal that we have right now, but we do have a top that's in place on those 30-minute time frame charts, and so that is worth paying attention. In fact, I would definitely be paying attention to that. Now, will those tops turn in anything of significance? Is this the end of the move out here? Well, there's a pot. Well, oh, I know what I need to do. Let me just close down. Oh, I didn't want to do that. No. Let me close down this screen just to free up a little bit of resources. And let's go take a look at why could this. So here's where this is going to be a little complicated, because when I pose the question, could this be the extent of the move? And you'll see her momentarily when I get to those charts. Give me a moment here. Here we go. When I get to is and that's this we're taking a look at in essence, today should be is likely going to be the third consecutive close, higher close out there. And this is where we take a look at what's the normal dance steps of the markets. Well, I'm going to open up the S&P 500. So now we're taking a look at the cash indice. We're not looking at the equity future contracts out here. What you will see, if you take a look at this, so, so the numbers, the black digits are measuring consecutive moves higher. The red digits, consecutive moves lower. We're interested right now in the consecutive moves higher. And today is going to become bar number three. Well, typically, other than this one little time period back here, we had six consecutive moves. That was between uh, June 8th and uh, June the 15th out here. Um, other than that, you'll see that typically we get two, three, or four bars. That's it. That's the extent of a move before we see some kind of pullback. But we're in bar number three today. So that says we're likely to get some type of retracement. So to suggest that that is the end of the move, well, we're also in this time period where this is just normal price movement of two steps up, two steps back, uh, three steps up, two steps back along those lines out there. So we just want to make sure that we take that into consideration. We take a look at the NDX 100, the same pattern. The Dow Jones, I'm on the left side, the left up column out here. The uh, if we take a look at weekly charts out there. We had three week pullbacks. Again, two and three bars. If there's anyone simple, let's just say you didn't know anything about technical knowledge. You didn't have any technical knowledge at all, uh, but you can certainly read where price opens and closes, where the prior days close, where the current days closes. Keep tracking the two and three, maybe four bar move. In fact, you should take a look at what the chart patterns are for the instrument you're trading. You might find a pattern out there that will really help you. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're going to take a look at ANET for Dan in Chicago. We're going to take a look at the Bitcoin for Coda, natural gas for Coda. And Peter wants to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well, folks. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds, as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to The Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So lots of questions, or at least two questions came in. You know, is this the top? I didn't see those questions until we want to close out that segment. And, uh, you know, so so I've laid out the first piece, which is just understanding just the normal dance steps of the uh, market. And so we're at that three consecutive days, three to four consecutive days. You typically see a pullback. And so Nancy, Mr. Bill, that makes it really complicated to try to answer that question. It could be. So we're going to utilize a number of different things out here to try to assist us with that. So one of those things that we could. So one of the things that you could take a look, let me go back to the uh, we took a look at we we're looking at the uh, 30 minute time frame chart. So let me just go back to to that. And uh, here I'm, I'm not to the 30 minute charts. I'm going to go back to the NQ, which really started us off there. So Nancy's question is this the top inside the NQ? Well, first, Nance, if price can uh, if price closes above the top of its daily profile, and again, let me give you that number. I don't know where it's going to close. Four, uh, 15, 359. If price closed by 15,359, that would be a bullish thing because price will have taken out resistance. Now, you know it's Stevie's two bar rule out here. This is where it gets complicated, right? Because you should see a pullback tomorrow. If not tomorrow, the following day out there. What else can we take a look at? Well, look, if we look at a 15-minute time frame chart, in addition to the TD9 count, so what's it really doing right now, Stevie? Well, if you take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart that has the TD9 count, we also notice a 15-minute Rhodes momentum indicator top. And I've got a 10-minute chart out there. Well, one thing is for certain. If there's going to be momentum in either direction, let's talk about momentum to the downside. Well, what we should definitely see is price not taking out prior bars highs. That's the first thing. And you ought to at least see price get down to the prior bars low out there. 
And we don't have that as we speak right now. You've got a TD9 count on a 30-minute basis. Price hasn't got to either the high or the low, but it certainly hasn't taken out that low. So from a progression standpoint, on a short-term basis, you really should be paying attention or watching that as well. We don't have that in any of these time frames. So it makes that pattern somewhat suspect. But that would be something to be paying attention to, uh, Nancy, uh, uh, Mr. Bill, everybody that is out there to help assist us with regard to that question as far as what kind of momentum is there to the downside. Right now, we don't have it as we speak. So that's one place to look. Another place to look really kind of comes to Peter uh, Peter's question. So let's just switch over there. I know I'm kind of going out of order here, but that's okay. I'm trying to keep my, my thoughts uh, uh, solid if I can. So now, Peter was asking about the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. Now, the advanced decline oscillator, you'll see a number of different panels on this chart. The top panel is price for the New York Stock Exchange. Below that is the advanced decline line. Below that is the advanced decline oscillator. The advanced decline oscillator is the difference between the 19 and 39 day exponential moving average of that advanced decline line data. I know it's a mouthful, but here's what it does for us. You don't have to worry about how it's computed. You just need to know what it means, where it's located from a, a is it above zero, below zero? Well, remember, last week, as markets were moving lower and everybody thought the markets are just simply going to continue to move lower forever, well, price had gotten to a very oversold condition. Oversold on this chart here is when you get to minus 150. Overbought is plus 150. Super oversold is when you get to the minus 250 level. And the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline uh, oscillator reading, when it made it that low, was on August 17th. And that was down at the minus 281.52. So oversold conditions have to work that condition off. Overbought conditions have to work that condition off. We're now above zero. This is only day number one above zero. But if we close above zero again tomorrow, that tells us that buyers are the ones that are in control. If price closes back below that level, the zero threshold line, Peter, tomorrow, that tells us that sellers always had control. Now, you'd like to know 222, which is the answer. I can at least tell you what to look for uh, and let the market answer that question for us. But right now, this is in a bullish mode or bullish condition with price being above that zero threshold level. It just needs to prove itself to us by trading above it for a couple of days. Let's also take a look at, as long as we're here, let's take a look at what's going on in larger term time frames. The larger term time frames, excuse me, folks, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that Stevie's having to deal with. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, so really managing a number of different things. Uh, so here we take a look at the NASDAQ 100. Right now, if I told you the show that's going on here, you, you would not believe it. At least the show that's going to go on in about three or four minutes from now. In any event, uh, so I'm, I'm glad to be in my cave here. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, remember it was uh, slightly bearish for the 30-minute time frame. It is fully bullish for the 60, 240 daily and weekly. So one aspect, Mr. Bill, one aspect, Nancy, is that you're bullish in these time frames out here. You're super bullish. If we take a look at a 60-minute time frame as an example, 82 instruments trading above profile, 7 below. So it, it, this is mostly, this is definitely shifted to a bullish mode. But watch the top of that daily profile to add to that piece of the pie. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. On the S&P 500, it's bullish for its 6240 daily and slightly bearish for the weekly. When I say slightly, 98 above, 118 below. So you keep an eye on both, but really I'd be paying attention to what's going on inside the NQ because of its bullishness and because pro, uh, price is testing a uh, profile uh, profile um, uh, resistance or trading above profile resistance at this stage of the game. The last element, you know, trying to keep this simple, the last element to try to help answer your question, what this market doing, would be to now switch back to the white background screens out here. And we'll go take a look at the euro, the pound, and the yen. Because those three, oops, I grabbed the wrong thing. God damn, Stevie. Screens. Here we go. Um, uh, is because uh, because those three are going to make up the majority of the U.S. dollar index. It, I'll like 92 percent. Uh, no, I take that back because that Canadian dollar. So it'd be about 80 percent of the U.S. dollar index. So let's go take a look at what's going on there. And we uh, we take a look at the euro. So the euro had formed a TD9 count top, bottom. That was negated a few days ago. But we've seen a little bit of a rally. You see an A to B equals CD to the downside. Well, 
turns out that there's a smaller one. There's if you take a look at the black lines, uh, it would have ended at this uh, point where my cursor is at. So that can extend itself. So there's two A to B equal CD patterns, the larger one, which has not completed, and the smaller one. Well, we got a bull sash candle yesterday. So that says that that smaller A to B equal CD confirmed by the D point pattern. Pretty simple. Now, no, it's not the, it's not the hurricane. That's for sure. Uh, it's a, it's a, not the hurricane. Uh, but uh, right now, price is trading above that red oscillator and change line. A dollar eight, one point oh eight six is the number. Now, if price is able to close above that, it suggests to us that we could see a further rally. If the euro is going to rally, the U.S. dollar index is going to move lower. And we take a look at the yen. Odds favor that by day's end. Well, first, by day's end, we're going to see a key reversal bar, if not the bullish engulfing candle that we have here. And that's confirming a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now, if I open up the Japanese yen here, which I'll do, let's open up the yen. Let's see how far back we go. Uh, see how many Rhodes Mintum indicator tops we can find. So there's one that formed out here. Let me get my cursor. That way we're all on the same page. We're all in the same spot. That formed out here with this bear sash. Evening star candle back on March 9th led to a nice TD9 count bottom. Uh, so how important are these Rhodes Mintum indicator tops? Uh, I need more data here. Shoot. Um, you know what? I don't want to add the data. It's just going to slow things down. So let's just... Um, uh, what I will what I will leave you with here is you have both the bearish reversal candle confirming the pattern prices trading below that green oscillator and change line that tells us we have a <coughs> we have a price oscillator above zero, but it's falling. So that says here that the yen and the U.S. dollar that the yen versus U.S. dollar has lost its momentum and price should continue to pull back. Well, when the yen is moving lower, it is getting stronger against the U.S. dollar. So if the euro rallies, stays above that red oscillator and change line, and the yen continues to move lower, that U.S. dollar index is going to weaken out there. In the case of the pound, it should go target that 1.267 level. That should also put weakness inside the U.S. dollar. So something else to consider. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. This time we get back, we'll take a look at ANET, Bitcoin, natural gas. We'll be right back. Rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So let's get to uh, a couple of requests that have uh, come in. Again, uh, if you'd like me to take a look at something for you, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, or give us a call, 877-927-6648. We're taking a look at ANET out here. Uh, this is for uh, Dan in Chicago. And uh, ANET is trading right now above both the top of its daily profile. Dan, that was a bullish thing. And it's also trading above. Just slightly, it's traded at 185.87 and 18, and it's just 185.99 on my system. But 185.51 is the number to be watching today. That's the green oscillator and change line. If it does close above that, odds favor that price will go target this uh, this uh, candle that is trading into that formed a bearish engulfing candle. So that would be its next resistance level. So price should make its way up to the 193.91 as long as it closes above that green oscillator and change line. If we look at a weekly time frame chart out here, we do not have any kind of a topping pattern. We have a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal that's been triggered, but no bearish reversal candle and prices trading above profile and its green oscillator and change line. Conditions here are very bullish. And come the end of the month, today is what, the 29th, tomorrow's the 30th, so that would be 31st on Thursday. Don't worry, folks. I, I, I'm really good at counting on my fingers here and figuring out where we're at in a month. But basically what this looks like is ANET is going to negate its TD9 count top. And it's also traded above the top of its monthly profile, 178.36 out there. So, uh, uh, Dan in Chicago, if you're if you um, if you're long this, you you got to stay long, or you should stay long. No, I'm not saying that price won't pull back. That is definitely not what I'm saying. Because if we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, it tells us that the uh, move higher is a little bit tired. Why is it a bit tired? Well, because it formed a TD9 count top. So we can see that here when we're taking a look at the TD9 count tops on the 30 minute chart for the NQ, the ES, the Dow, the Russell 2000. Remember, we said, hey, you if, if this thing's going to get any traction, when it does get traction, you won't take out the prior bars high, but you will take out the prior bars low. And that's what we've got really going on in place right here. The last two bars, even though it didn't take it out by closing um, below that, that was on the bar that completed at 230, but it did trade below the low and it never traded above that high. Again, just a little subtle thing to assist you in understanding. So what price should do here, Dan, on a 30-minute basis, get back to test support. Right now, that's printed out at 184.88. So price may not hold that oscillator and change. Now, we don't know until day's end out there. Price could find support, bounce off of that. And then you need a close above today's high to tell you that the rally is back in rally mode, and that would be a close above 187.11 out there. No, any close below 184.88-ish would take you back to the 180.78 level out there. But on a daily, a weekly, and a monthly time frame, boy, this looks like one heck of a uh, run out here, and it looks like it should continue to do so. Now, for ANET here, you can see this is going to be day number three of consecutive moves higher. So it typically, as we've seen a four-bar move, a couple four-bar moves out here, but it's typically, you know, three, two, three bars out there before you see some kind of a, a pullback or a retracement. But weekly and monthly, they're definitely saying long and strong out here. So I hope that that helps you out, and uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Coda, inside the Tiger's Den, wanted to take a look at Bitcoin. BTC in the September futures contracts. Where did I put that? I think I put that here. Yeah. So we've got the September futures contract up. Now, this has had one heck of a day out here. When Stevie says one heck of a day, it's up by about $2,065 as we speak right now. Trade out at $28,155. Now, Coda, this had a TD9 count bottom. So that TD9 count bottom was bar number eight that identified the low. The pattern completed on August 25th, uh, a few days after bar number eight. So you've got a TD9 count bottom. Bitcoin is trading above its oscillator and change line on a daily basis. It's trading above profile resistance. Bitcoin for the September contract ought to go target that TD9 count breakdown resistance level coda. And that's at the 30050 level. Now, let me just take a quick peek at a 30 minute time frame chart. Let's give you a little bit of the play by play. And if we take a look at it, this has formed a TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator top. 
But when we take a look at this out here, let's take a look at the last bar, kind of an inside bar, didn't take out the top or bottom. So watch the current bar. But what we've really seen is sideways action. So this 30-minute TD9 count top really hasn't uh, taken much traction. Not that it can't, but if you close above that high, and that high, by the way, for the day is 28,335. If price closes above that, well, then that's another signal that this is headed up to that daily TD9 count breakdown resistance level at the 30,050 area. Not much else for me to report on when I take a look at the weekly or the monthly chart. Just not enough data. Uh, for me to be able to pull up to uh, do that. I have to go to the continuous contract. But I think you've got the gist with regard to uh, uh, Coda where uh, Bitcoin, at least the September contract, is headed to. You also wanted to take a look at natural gas. So let's get back and take a look at natural gas. We'll go to our multi-time frame set of charts out here. Now, natural gas, we saw that nice move higher um, yesterday. Uh, how much of that was caused by the, uh, uh, the uh, hurricane in the uh, Gulf? Probably all of it was caused by it. When you had a, a gap to the upside, I believe. Um, but we're looking at right now, we're looking at the October contract here for natural gas. It has a TD9 count bottom, Coda, you can see that, that has led to a consolidation with inside its profile. We can see that price is trading below its red oscillator and change line. When you trade below red oscillator and change line, that tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. So the daily signal would suggest that if you're looking to take a long position inside of natural gas, do it at about $2.55. Not right to that penny, but right around that area, the bottom of its profile. If price closes above that oscillator and change line, well, then that could change things. Now, as we take a look at intraday charts out here, we can see on a 60 minute, we see a TD9, oh, we see a Rose Mintum indicator top. And I'll just uh, squish this screen just a tad. You'll see the pattern there. That was that dark cloud cover. And price found support at its breakout level, $2.62 out there. See how that works? That's why you want to really learn that tool, learn that system out here. So price has held support. So I'm not getting the signal here that price is getting ready to move lower down to that 255 level. But I'll be watching it because you've just got a good old-fashioned consolidation. And in fact, if price closes inside the swing point low, that's bar number eight on my system, that would mean below $2.68. You close inside a swing point. Even if it's without volume, it still opens up the door to go test that low. In this case here, let's just say support at the $2.55 mark. So CODA. I hope that helped you out with regard to uh, natural gas. You've got a nice uh, buy the deep point bottom, I believe, on the uh, a monthly chart out there, Rosemont to indicator bottom on the weekly. That's led to nothing more than pain because it's been consolidating with inside that profile basically since April, since April of this year. Uh, so that is a, a long sideways consolidation, and I can understand why uh, I lost interest in natural gas out there. So, Code, I hope that that helps you out, and uh, thank you so much for taking time to put in a request. I think there's a few that came in by email. There is. First one is from Greg, and Greg wants to take a look at Tesla. So let me close down this screen, free up some resources as well. Give me a moment. Give me a moment out here. Uh shoot where do we go here we go all right so let's go take a look at uh, tesla tsla it's going to take a moment for these screens here to populate no problem and uh, let's see if we can figure out the uh, question let me read the question it goes like this hope you're uh, okay you're uh, uh hope your son-in-law is doing okay thanks uh will you take a look at tesla and give me some resistance levels you've got the d point at 256 and might take a small position Tesla. All right, so as we take a look at the day charts for Tesla, so I'm looking at an A to B equals C to the upside that looks like it is forming. And we will take a look at that when we get back from this break. Because it's an A to B equals CD pattern, that's what you're talking about, Greg. I'm gonna switch over to my black background charts because we can take a look at that tool there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. 
for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we'll, we'll do Tesla in a, a moment. We've got a caller on the line. We've got Call Ahead City here at TFNN. So let's go to Dave in Framingham. Dave, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Hey, How thanks. are you doing today? I'm good. Uh, hopefully you guys are going to be all right down there somehow. We that's will on the East Coast, that's for sure. Yeah, on the East Coast, we're in good shape, uh, uh, so no problems here. And, uh, wow. you know, I haven't really checked out the latest uh, track, but, uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully everybody's okay, <laughs> you know, on this thing. Um, that's for sure. So, uh, Steve, but thank do, you. Yeah, Steve, can you, uh, do we have an inverted head and shoulders bottom on the GDX here? I picked it up a little bit over $28. Uh, $28. Well, um, so, you know, I'm not the best when it comes to those head and shoulder patterns, to be quite honest. So I, I, I will I will just uh, I'll just refrain from answering that question because I'm, it's just not a pattern that I spend much okay. time with. I'm, I'm familiar with it, but but no reason for me to, to go there. What I can share with you is it does look like we have a bottom. And the reason that I can share that with you is one, because price has been able to take out resistance. And that was the top of its daily profile. So there's one next level. Dave, that price needs to take out to tell us that there's really a change in trend. And that price point is going to be 31.75. And that is its okay. TD9 count breakdown resistance levels. Oftentimes, price can get back to where price had broken down from and then fall off the uh, map again, so to speak. So that would be the next area. Now, what we're seeing today inside the GDX, it's got good volume. It's got 13 million shares. And that 13 million shares is going against 17 million shares from the 24th of August, or the 23rd of August. So we're going to pass that uh, B point with volume out here and that suggests that the first price target becomes 29.71 now the retracement even though it doesn't show on this white background chart here Dave the retracement was about 56 percent so pretty close to a 0.618 area and that says this could be nothing more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD now as price gets up to 29.71 I know you're long and stay long 
What you'd be watching okay. for is if you were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would basically be like a, a bearish shooting star, a dark cloud cover candle, a bearish engulfing, a bearish sash candle out there, a uh, three river evening star. Those would be basically the patterns, uh, the candles that you would be looking for, those pattern formations. If we do get that, that would then be suggesting to you and I that we should see a retracement or a pullback. And right now, the level of support is the area of resistance that it took out, which was the top of its profile at $28.44. So that's what the daily time frame chart is telling us. So has it formed a bottom? I don't know. Um, has it formed a head and shoulders bottom? I don't know. I think it has formed a bottom from the standpoint that we should see price continue to move higher as long as it can stay out of that profile area. And uh, so you've got that A to B equals CD. Now, as I open up the other time frame charts out here on the weekly, as an example, what you'd really like to see on Friday is for price to be able to get back inside this profile. What it needs to do that is close above 29.12. If, if price does not close above 29.12 at week's end, it, then it becomes very suspect because there's actually an A to B equals CD to the downside inside of the GDX on a weekly basis. Now, the volume metric here, we'd be looking at the bar from June 30th, and that had 101 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed with only 80 million shares back on August the 18th. But nonetheless, there still is an active A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, to the downside. But if price get back inside that profile, it would then suggest that we should see a run to that 3022 area. And 3022 is going to really be your line of, line of demarcation when it comes to the intermediate chart. And the reason that is the case, Charlie, is because we had two consecutive closes below the bottom of that bearish structured profile. Counter trend moves will typically find some resistance at either the bottom, but more so will find resistance at the center of that profile. And that's at that 3022 level. So I want to give you the numbers because I won't be here for a couple of uh, weeks out there, okay. but at least you can kind of monitor things uh, that way out there. So what okay. questions, what questions do you have based on that information that I spewed out to you, so to speak? Uh, it sounds good. I'm just wondering if uh, the gold the dollar is down quite a bit today, it seems. And, it is. And so and so with regard to the dollar right now, the level that I would be watching where it could find support, and the reason I have to use the word could is because it's attempting to form a new profile. And I won't know till 6.01 this evening. Actually, I won't know at 6.01. I won't know until later this evening. But right now, the area to be watching on a further move lower, based on looking at the charts for the euro and the yen, and even the pound out there, the dollar should move lower. Now, the area of support here would be 103.07. I don't know if this is going to hold this profile level, but right now it's the data that we have, so it's the data that I would use if, if I was you. Yeah. Okay. I think that answers the question. Hopefully it will run up for another few more days here on the GDX. It should. This is only it's a consecutive day, second consecutive day higher out here, so there's no reason for it to not you know, see another the third day of a move higher out there. But we're getting that stage where you should see some kind of retracement as well, so you've got to watch those. Old, so you got to watch those support levels, uh, which I, which I provided okay. to you so far. Okay. All right. Have a good have have a good vacation. Thank you. I will. I will. And thanks for calling. That Thank was you. Dave in uh, Framingham, and that was the uh, GDX. So let's go back to the uh, charts here for Tesla. If you give me a moment, um, what charts are we on? We're on the white background screen. We're going to go over to the black background screen uh, because we want to take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So if you give me a moment, we'll get back there. We'll actually pull the Tesla chart up, and with regard to Tesla. What I suggested is that uh, it looks like we're going to get a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. Now, the volume on Tesla for the B point is going to be the high from August 24th. There were 17 million shares. We're at 14 million right now. So uh, it's close. But right now, we definitely have is an A to B equals CD pattern has been triggered. Let me make sure I grab the right low. That's at 27.30. This is at 27.27. Okay. And the B point out here is that trading day from August 24th, that retracement, a one-day retracement in August 20. Uh, uh, 25th out there was a 56% retracement. So this could also just be making a one-to-one. -one. Now, I believe, let me get back here and take a look at the, oh, I deleted that. Oh, shoot. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find that email again here. That was Dave. That wasn't Dave. That was Greg. So Greg said you had 256.74. Oh, I'm on GDX. Jeez Louise, Stevie. Put you put Tesla up. Sorry about that, folks. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just a few things on Stevie's mind out here. Okay. Now let's take it. So Tesla. 
uh, is uh, taken out of swing point. That's a swing point from August 22nd, 130 million shares. You're at 120, 110. So it does look like it, it may get that volume at the end of the day. Let's give you the price projections out here. So the one-to-one -one price projection uh, that I've got would take you up to the 256. You've got 74. I've got 256. 64. We're not going to quibble about a dime. Now, this is a wide ranging bar coming into the one to one level and prices trade above the top of its daily profile. And if you look at the weekly chart, you'll see prices well above the center of its bullish structured profile. You know what that means. And if you take a look at the weekly price above the top of its monthly, I'm sorry, the monthly pro, if you look at the monthly chart price above the top of the monthly out there, that says, I don't think the one to one is going to be the end of the game for Tesla. So if you were thinking of shorting it, I, I don't. That's not how A to B equals CD patterns. They do not end on wide ranging bar. That doesn't mean that tomorrow can't be a small bar and then the next day things move lower out there. But it likely is not the top. In fact, more likely, price is going to make its move up to the 264, 265 level. 264 is 1.272. 26573 is the top of that weekly profile. So, to the extent you were looking at a short, mm, I would hold off on that wide ranging bar. And everything else looks pretty bullish as we speak right now. So I hope that helps you out. Greg, thanks so much for the request. We come back to this break. We'll quickly take a look at uh, Silver Abgo for David in uh, Panama City. And if we can, we'll try to get to uh, Apple and Microsoft. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN.
Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at Silver here. This is for Casanova inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, Casanova, if you take a look at my charts here, you look at the daily uh, time frame, you'll see bar number eight is going to form today. When you have a bar number eight, that is the high of the pattern. In this case here, we're looking at potential tops. This will likely, 90% of the time, it goes on to form that bar number nine. And so that says we should see a TD9 count top that forms between today and, uh, and Thursday out here so between today and thursday now we can see that price is attacking or about to attack it's a d it's a, a td9 count breakdown resistance level at 25 25 so more likely than not we're about to see some type of short-term top over the next couple of days when it comes to uh, silver now dave and i were looking at the u.s dollar index you might recall that so how i would then put this together with that new profile I'd say that the U.S. dollar index gets down and gets to support in that 103.07 level while silver is making a TD9 count top. The dollar reverses. Maybe it's consolidated inside its profile and uh, silver uh, pulls back and perhaps tests his oscillator and change line. So that's what I would go with at this uh, state of the game out here. I see a TD9 count top that uh, would form this evening on the 240 minute time frame chart. So it's really the daily and the 240 that are giving us those signals. So I hope that helped you out with regard to silver out there. Again, watch the uh, dollar and watch the uh, daily chart for uh, silver out there. Now, let's go take a look at um, Avgo. Uh, Broadcom out here. Let's pull that uh, chart up. This is for uh, David in Panama City. David, be safe out there. He's the one that probably is most likely to see some uh, hurricane stuff. So we take a look at Broadcom out here. It's just trading with inside its daily profile. It's above the center at 882.59. Odds favor move to either 897.37 or 913. When I look at the monthly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart, I should say, we've got a consolidation with inside its profile. Support 833.53. Resistance 923.18. And the TD9 count top on the monthly time frame chart but it's just basically led to somewhat of a sideways move out there so david looks like this should continue to head higher out there 897 37 or 913 folks stay tuned tom o'brien is up next and i'll see you in a couple weeks take care be safe out there